It was a wild. And when I say wild, I mean wild. Not the wildest. Aaron, this one is for you, baby. Not the wildest, but absolutely, positively wild weekend over in Chicago. Just over the weekend. More details emerging tonight from this scene in Bridgeport as police found a body inside the trunk of a burning car around 2 a.m. Friday morning. Community activist Andrew Holmes says the victim is a 15 year old boy from the north side. He met with the mother of that teen earlier today. She's trying to hold her memories in of her baby and the things that she talked about was only his smile. He can light up a room and you know the disturbing part about this. This is her only child. The family was too shaken to offer a photo of the teen and we are not releasing his name until the medical examiner completes its autopsy. But Holmes says the victim was a student at Menta Academy on Chicago's south side. Holmes says he was shot multiple times in the chest in another part of the city before his remains were driven down to this alley and lit on fire near South Parnell in Bridgeport. As gruesome and as evil as this is and as it sounds. How much do you want to bet? Because listen, nobody just takes a 15 year old boy. And let's just be honest, over in Chicago, we know that the majority of the people that are committing the crimes and doing the most gruesome things are people that look like me, that are much, much younger than me, more than likely they are teenagers, right? And so think about this for a second. This is something that you see in a movie. 15-year-old boy shot in a separate location, driven in a car to a completely different location, and then they set the car on fire. This is Chicago. Listen, this isn't a normal crime. This isn't a breaking and an entering. This isn't a self-defense situation. This ain't no, yo, your girl got into it with another girl and they was fighting over you and so you got a domestic violence situation that you got to deal with. No, this is not normal. This is not normal. It's not normal for a 15-year-old boy. I have a 15-year-old daughter. I spent an extraordinary amount of time with her this weekend. We went over into her uh, banquet where she got four different awards for toughest kicker, toughest athlete. She won three national medals this year and so on and so forth. And so while we're celebrating her and all of the parents are gathered together and we're one happy family within my small community by which I, I, I had, you know, my wife flew in and she flew, flew back early in order to be able to attend the banquet. And so we sitting there and we're like proud parents. And we're looking at these 15 and 14 and 13 year olds and 16 and 17 year olds and they're celebrating each other going off to college, some of them, and they're all crying. And then they had their little mini concert where they imitated their favorite rapper and then they jumped up there and they all had their they cameras and they lights up in order to imitate and they was having a good time. I can only think about and I can only imagine when this came across my desk, a 15 year old boy on the other side in Chicago involved in God knows what. Getting killed, shot, probably set up. Chances are somebody close to him. And then threw in the trunk, and then they set the car on fire. This is all happening in an American city. In the city where Brandon Johnson just outlined what his crime prevention tactic and bill was going to be. That basically said nothing. We understand that that car was stolen, uh, stolen from uh, possibly Lansing out in the suburbs in a, from an auto shop. Uh, hopefully th those security footage can shed some light on that too. The registered owner of the vehicle told ABC7 that he initially had no idea what unfolded Friday morning as his vehicle had been in the shop undergoing repairs. Residents in Bridgeport are now asked to check their ring cameras and a $1,000 reward is being offered by these community activists. Shout out to Mark Meck. I'm going to read that shortly, big dog. And conviction. Parents, also ask your children, ask your children, maybe if your kids go to Men's Academy, ask your children if they heard anything. They know. You don't think that the parents know who their children are? I know what my daughter is doing before she doing it. I know just by the way that she walk in the house, whether or not she was late to school that day, whether she was late to one of her classes. We know, we know who our children are. We know. 
You know whether or not your kid was involved in some stuff. We know what your kid did. We know all that we know. They know. We know. Everybody knows what's happening out here in these streets. And kids are less likely to be able to keep their mouth shut for the rest of their life than adults. They know. We need information to help the detectives bring this case to justice. So we did just hear from the medical examiner that the cause of death for that 15 year old boy was a shot to the neck and chest. So we'll soon learn the identity of that boy in the meantime. So, but that's not the only thing that was happening in Chicago over the weekend. Let me bring you up to speed of what's really happening out here in these streets. Because I know y'all think that, oh my God, that was just so bad. But multiply it times 20. Well, it was a violent weekend in parts of Chicago, including a CTA station. Multiple shootings left nearly two dozen wounded. One person has died. One of those shootings was on the red line at Roosevelt, leaving two people injured. The youngest victim from this weekend's shooting was a, just a 13-year-old. CBS 2's Andrew Ramos has details from the South Loop. Well, it's the streak of violence that started Friday evening, and as the weekend got underway, showed no signs of slowing down. As many as five shootings alone happening Sunday morning. Gun violence rattled the city of Chicago on what was a brutal weekend for several communities. On Friday night, four victims left wounded in four separate shootings. The violence continued over the next 48 hours. This map outlining the shootings. Look at the look at the radius. Look at the diameter. Everything on the left away from the water is safe. Everything that goes back into the community and actually into the city is on fire. From Friday night to Sunday night, the most chaotic scene unfolded Saturday night on the Roosevelt Red Line station in the South Loop, where just after 10 p.m. police say two men aged 20 and 25 were shot by another man at the Roosevelt Red Line platform. CPD officers quickly swarmed the scene, arresting the suspect. The 25-year-old who was shot multiple times remains in critical condition. Early Sunday at around 12.40 a.m., cops say a 13-year-old boy who was sitting in the passenger side of a car in the 8700 block of South Marquette Avenue on the south side was shot by someone driving by in a gold Kia. So let me ask y'all a question. Your 13-year-old out here in the streets, late at night, sitting in the car, doing what? You don't know where your 13-year-old is? Not that we should even be victim shaming, but let's just look at the culture and the dynamics by which these people are even in a position to get themselves hurt in the first place. What are you doing sitting in a car at 13-year-old chilling, because we all know you ain't just chilling, what are you doing just sitting in a car at 13 years old? And then how does the, the, the gold Kia boys drive by and then do a, do a drive by and hit you up? He was shot in the chest and was listed in serious condition. And just before the weekend began, a body was found in the trunk of a burning car Friday morning in Bridgeport. CBS 2 has We know about learned. that one that the body was that of a 15 year old boy from Chicago. The Cook County Medical Examiner determined the victim died from being shot in the chest and neck. The case of the 15 year old found in the burning car remains under investigation. No arrests have been made. That's not it. We got domestic violence cases. We got everything happening in Chicago. Bodies being found in the ponds. We gonna get there. I, I wanna show you your city. I want to show you who it is that you protecting and supporting. And tonight a family is angry after their loved one, 34 year old Maria Roque was shot and killed outside her Austin home Wednesday morning, right in front of her two children. The family says they know who shot her and why. The question is how a system designed to protect victims of domestic violence failed. Here's CBS 2's Darius Johnson. Siblings are like best friends. She was the mom, I would say that. Especially when they're the oldest. My brothers and me, she was the one that would be like, why are you guys are arguing? Andreas Roque is now missing his other half, Maria. I want to cry. I want to throw things, but I can't. 
They've been attached since day one, and the days without her. It's been really hard for everybody, especially I know my brothers. And, and right now they, they're suffering a little bit, but we just want justice for her. And I hope it's very soon. Very soon. Wednesday morning, Andreas's heart sank when he got a call from his aunt. She just told me they took her to the hospital. And I said, what's going on? And she was like, she got shot. Chicago police say just before 630, 34-year-old Maria Roque was shot multiple times in front of her Austin home. Me hearing that my nephew cry and saying I tried to save her. Her two kids, ages 8 and 14, witnessed their mother take her last breath. One in the car and one he heard the shot and see his own mom in the stairs trying to breathe and she put in CPR and that's the most horrible. Her twin and her best friend Madi, both heartbroken, along with those who came to a vigil to honor her just days after her death. Justice for Maria! May you rest in peace, Angel. She was a giver. Yeah. She wore her heart on her sleeve. You would have never known she was going through the, the stuff that she was going through, yeah. the nightmare yeah. that she was living. The nightmare was a violent relationship. Her family says Maria was scared even after she filed multiple orders of protection. A warrant for her ex-boyfriend's arrest was issued on December 12th after violating that order one day before her death. She was one to kind of like wipe it off. Like, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. A new one was granted just hours after she was killed, but it was too late. A piece of paper is not going to save a life. As you see, Maria's not here. And the paper didn't save her. Don't worry, Chicago was on fire on multiple different fronts. Let me share with you what happened on the other side of Chicago. Y'all ready for this? Don't worry, we're going to get there. We have breaking news. A body has been recovered in the search for Brisa Romero. The Carpentersville teen has been missing. Oh, y'all thought that it was only black people that had problems or, or that was going through it? Everybody going to suffer in Chicago. Last week, Gabriela Primus is first at four. Yeah, Natalie Anthony, officials are still waiting for formal identification uh, from the coroner, but they believe that the female body that was recovered from the pond does match the description of Brisa. Crews recovered that body earlier this afternoon. Let's show you some uh, chopper footage of crews on scene of the large retention pond uh, where Brisa's Nissan Rogue was pulled out yesterday. Investigators began focusing on this retention pond near Lakeview Parkway and Executive Way in Vernon Hills yesterday after new analysis of cell phone data established the area as a last known location of Brisa's phone. Police say their preliminary investigation suggests Brisa accidentally drove into the pond after she failed to navigate the T intersection. They obtained video from a nearby fast food restaurant that was taken shortly before her phone's last communication with area cell towers. There is currently no identity. Uh, indication of foul play. Sonar and dive teams from various Lake County Fire Departments helped in the recovery effort. So, listen, the devil is running rampant. The de I know it's not just Chicago, because see, it's a combination of different things, and the reason why I wanted to share with you different stories from different parts all around that particular city is because I honestly just think that it's just a negative spirit that's on that city right now. I think that it's a bad spirit that's on that city right now. And until they get it under control, there's no way that you can continue to let people in there when you can't even control, the police can't figure it out, where you finding bodies and find it inside of ponds. They women is getting cut up and shot up by their ex-boyfriends that got kids right in front of them trying to give them CPR, people getting robbed on the red line. Bodies being found from burnt up cars. People are getting carjacked left and right. Where do we live at? Where do we live at? Where do we live at? I don't know if we living in a third world country or if we actually in a space where it's supposed to be reasonable expectations and standards to how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. And most times, people know who the culprits are that's performing these crimes and how it is that they catching their bodies and their victims.